besides which I'm expecting my father at any moment. Don't worry. When he comes in, I'll leave. You'll leave before he arrives. Why didn't you call from the airport? My plane was late getting in. Well, did you at least manage to see Mr. Schaefer? Yes. And he remembers your father very well. He claims he designed a lot of jewelry for him at one time. Over the years he did, yes. But what about the ring? He had a heck of a time making it out from that sketch. Uh, it was a fine sketch. He finally compared it to one of the ones he had in his files and thought that it could be the same ring. He kept files on everything he did for Daddy? That surprises me. The guy's very meticulous. I guess that's why he's a jeweler. Well, please, let's not get into speculations about his habits or his profession. What about an inscription? He kept a record of all engravings, too. Isn't that something? Fabulous. Was there an inscription? Yep. <clears throat> to SR with love. Well, that proves it. Did give it to Stephanie Ryan. And now Nola Reardon knows. Who's Nola? Nola Reardon's nobody, and I do mean nobody. Thank you, Bob. You did wonderfully. I'll send you a bill for my time and expenses. Of course. You'll be hearing from me again. Anytime at all. Well, I found you in. Hello, Nala. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Jean. I was just on my way out. Oh, well, this won't take long. I just stopped by to congratulate you on your engagement to Mr. McCord. Uh, we're not engaged. Oh, well, well Daddy said he saw the ring. Uh, oh, there it is. May I see? I, I know a little something about jewelry, and oh, this is lovely. Yes, and it looks to be about 30 years old. Actually, uh, Quinton got this in London several years ago. Oh, well... Looks to me like telling it was passed down in the family. But that's impossible because Quentin doesn't have a family. How silly of me. I keep forgetting. Uh, so like I said, I was going. I was just on my way out. Oh, honey, one thing you're not going to do is go alone. I promised Quint that Fritz would go with you. I'll tell, tell him I'm ready. ready. Right on. You know what I think is so wonderful is how a simple little girl like you from 7th Street managed to get engaged to a handsome, dashing man like Mr. McCoy. As I said before, Vanessa, we're not engaged. No, no, but you're, you're very close. In fact, I'm sure there's nothing about Mr. McCoy that you don't know. So, now Nola has proof that Quentin is really sure and right. Ooh, I could just wring her neck. Oh, my poor lonely child. You have to talk to yourself these days. <laughs> oh. oh, Daddy, haven't I... I didn't see you. Well, I'm not surprised. You seem to be concerned with something of extreme importance. <laughs> Nothing more important than you. Oh, sweet child. Hmm. Thank you. Lunch. No, I'm not hungry, Mom. I'm not hungry. No, well, you've got to eat something. You're going to make yourself sick. I just fed the baby. I just wish he'd call. I just wish that Mr. Llewellyn would call. Oh, I'm sure he will, sweetheart. It was awful nice of Henry to find him for you. Yeah. 
But, uh, Mom, I don't want him to get involved anymore. I just don't want him to get involved. He's been acting awfully funny around Henry lately. I mean, you hardly say two words when he comes over. Ever since he made a fuss over your ring, you stopped wearing it. I haven't stopped wearing it. I've got it on a chain around my neck here. Rings are supposed to be on your finger, dear. Well, I... I'm superstitious. I just don't want to wear it on my finger until I know that Quentin is back here safe. He'll be all right. Besides, Mr. Llewellyn told you he's being guarded around the clock. Well, Helena was guarded around the clock, and I can't even get her on the phone. Well, uh, I'm sure if something had happened, the authorities would have notified you, dear. Well, I, that's what I have to hope, Mom, because I'm not... Until Mr. Llewellyn calls, I'm not going to know what's going on over there with Helena or Quinn. Careful those rocks. This tunnel was almost cleared before. Have a look. See the edge of that rock? It's newly formed. It ha hasn't even been weathered at all. Oh, no wonder. What do you mean? Look here. What? The ceiling's cracking. Oh, no. Oh, Dr. Renfield. He was standing right over here. He was waiting for the detonation. It was supposed to be small so that the the inner wall would crumble. It came with such a force that it took out the entire substructure of the cave, blew it outward. The impact must have killed him instantly. Quinn, I still can't believe that you set those charges. Oh, I set the charges, all right. Yes, indeed. But I didn't set them for an explosion like this. It would have taken twice the amount of dynamite I used to, to produce something like this. You know, it's amazing that this ceiling hasn't collapsed years ago. Yeah, it probably would have. But nobody's been here since, fortunately. What do you suppose happened to the inner wall? I don't know, my friend. I intend on finding out. We better uh, get to work. We don't have much time. Hello? Hello, Miss Reardon. Uh, this is uh, Kent Flewellen. Oh, yes, I, I've been waiting and, and worrying. Had something happened? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to wait and to call you back when I knew something definite. Well, what did you find out? Well, I can tell you what became of Miss Manzini. What do you mean, what became of Miss Manzini? There's no need for you to worry. She's fine. She's absolutely fine. She's in very good hands. I, I don't understand. What do you mean she's in very good hands? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not explaining myself very well, am I? You see, after I spoke to you, I made some inquiries and I learned that Miss Manzini decided she wanted to join Mr. McCord on the dig after all. And, well, that's where they both are now. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. I spoke directly to the chap who's in charge of protecting them at the site and he told me that he personally took Miss Manzini there. But did he see Quentin? Did he actually see Quentin? Yes, yes, he did. Oh, believe me, you don't have to worry about a thing. He has his eye on Mr. McCord every minute. Oh, well, I, I'm very relieved. I mean, I was imagining all sorts of things. Well, I'm glad I'm able to reassure you. So I shouldn't actually worry if I don't hear from them till they get back to the city? No, no, not at all. There's no need for any anxiety at all. All the dangers have been anticipated and are being provided for. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Llewellyn. Thank you for going to all the trouble. It was no trouble at all. Goodbye, Miss Reardon. Poor Miss Reardon. What will you do when you find out that Mr. McCord's supervision and protection are in the hands of Mr. Silas Crocker? Oh, well, what was I going to do? Crocker was the highest bidder. <laughs>